Hi everyone, welcome to week two in bioinformatics. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step what you need to do for homework one underscore four, the Galaxy Alignment Pipeline tutorial. Each of these steps is described in the Google Doc, but I thought it might be helpful to have a video just so you can see how to click on the Use Galaxy website. Last week, we used Galaxy for the first time. We took a NCBI FASTA file and we translated it into amino acids by downloading the FASTA file onto our computer and uploading it to the Galaxy server. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the second way to get data, which is to directly load from the databases. Um, I will refer to this in other videos as side loading. So we're going to open up a new history. We're gonna be able to pull data from the database and we're never gonna bring it to our computer. It's kind of a safer way to do it. We know that we're not opening the file, we're not adding any file extensions like .txt, and we're not doing anything to corrupt the formatting, which is a plain text formatting, we're making sure that it doesn't get opened on our computer. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to galaxy usegalaxy.org and log in. Once you log in, you'll start a new history. I've named my history alignment example. And I have it already run here just so I can show you um, each of the steps. Once you have that history set up, it will be empty and we have to fill it with the data that we're going to use for this experiment. Go to the upload data button. You can see it on the left. It's actually above all the other applications. And when we click upload data, we're going to not choose local file. This is what we did last time. We're going to paste fetch data. And we're able to paste websites into this window. So I have these two websites right here that are the places that the sequences are hosted on the NCBI database. Um, actually, this is the um, European database, the short read archive. So I can paste both of those there. Once I've pasted both of those files, I click start. And it may take a few minutes to turn from gray, which means that the job has loaded, to yellow, which means that the Galaxy server is processing the job, to green, which means that the data is ready for us to process. I already have the data loaded through a different method last year down in my history so I can look at it and you can see that the format of this data is FASTQ files and the FASTQ files have each individual read ID, the sequence, and then the quality scores for every single base in that read. We want to figure out before we use this data for an analysis, how high quality is it? The way that we can do that is with the FastQC app. So I'm going to type FastQC in the search tool. You can see the FastQC read quality reports come up. Anything in my history is available for the FastQC, but I specifically want to look at these FastQ files from the EBI SRA, the forward read ends underscore one, and the reverse read ends underscore two. I don't need to change any of the settings in the FastQC report. And once I run it, it will turn gray and then yellow and green. And I can click on the eyeball icon to look and see how high quality is my data. I'm using the control minus function in my browser to be able to zoom and change the zoom so I can see the whole graph. And I can see that there's a green check mark next to per base quality score because this data has already been filtered. It's already been trimmed. And so we only have high quality bases in our reads. We're ready to do the alignment. Once you've verified that both the forward and the reverse read have error bars and um, a box plot that's in this green range, we know that the base quality is high enough to do the alignment. And we're ready for step three or step four, align to reference. We have data loaded into Galaxy and we wanna think before we try to align it to a reference genome, where did this data come from? So I took a screenshot of the project 
on the European Nucleotide Archive, where this data is from. And we can see that this was a study of six individual human patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. These individuals had single cells isolated and whole genome sequencing done of those single cells. Because this is human DNA, we're gonna to want to align it to the human genome. And this is a genome that's already built into the Use Galaxy tool. So we don't have to download from another website or sideload from another website. The reference genome, we can get it directly from within Use Galaxy. We do this by selecting the BWMEM tool. And then we wanna change three things in the BWMEM tool. The reference genome, we're gonna make it the latest build of the human genome. What are the forward reads and what are the reversed reads? So I'll show you how to set that up. In tools, we say map to get the map with BWMM tool. I can actually try searching BWMM to see if I get better results. And this is the tool that we're looking for, map with BWMM. We want to map medium and long reads because our reads in the FASTQ file are 150 base pairs. If we had shorter reads, we would choose the map with BWA tool. So we want to use a built-in index. But the first option, Apis mellifera, is, is honeybees. Um, obviously, we're not going to get a lot of good results if we use the reference genome that's just first in the alphabet. So we can scroll down, or we can type the code for the latest build of the human genome. You can think of these builds as sort of being like software updates. So as you get different updates from your phone, you get different versions of the same operating system. The same is true for the genome. The genome is constantly being corrected and improved, and each build of the genome is more representative of the human population as a whole, rather than just the few individuals that were sequenced in the Human Genome Project. So we click on HG38. We have a paired end experiment, and we want to select the file that ends underscore one for the first read and the file that ends underscore two for the second read. Once we've made those three changes, we're going to run the tool on simple Illumina mode with default settings and click Execute. This job will take a long time to run. It may actually even take a day. It depends on how many people are using the Galaxy server, um, which depends on things like snow days, right? If a lot of people are snowed out and unable to get to their lab, they, instead of doing bench experiments, will work on bioinformatics experiments. Once your job has loaded, it will turn gray, which means it's waiting to go to the server, and turn yellow while it's running. You can see on the right-hand panel how my loading of data is still running. I'm actually going to cancel it because I don't need a second copy of this data. Once it's done running, it will turn green, and you're ready to get the data for uploading to Canvas and submitting your assignment. So you click on the job. You click on this description map with BWA mem. Click on the floppy disks download save icon. And for this assignment, to show me that you've gone through the process, but avoid downloading a really big file that's 7.9 megabytes, I'm having you download just the index. So every single alignment creates two files. It creates the BAM file which actually stores the read information and where it belongs on the genome, and the index file. The index file is a small text file that describes the alignment. So I'm going to download that index file. This is just a few kilobytes of data, um, and now it's already downloaded, and I'm ready to submit it on Canvas. If you have any more questions about homework one underscore four, please email me. And as always, we'll have drop-in office hours on Monday um, using the link to Zoom, the Zoom link that is through Canvas. Have a great day.